So hello fellow people who like geology. Uh, this is Glenn and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to basically read geological maps. So here I have a geological map from the Geological Society of Victoria and as you can see the Department of Plan Manufacturing and Industry it is a Kilmore 1 to 50,000 centimetre squared map. So 150,000 means one centimetre squared is uh, 50,000 centimetres squared in real life. And that's basically all you need to look at. You don't really need to know that. Um, so, but this part, adjoining sheets, shows you other maps that they've made that if you put them all together, gives you a whole set of geological fo formations that run into each other. Then we go up, we have the topography. So we have roads, down to railways, bridges, watercourses, drains, lines of springs, so that's also watercourses, uh, government bores, so they're holes that they drill into the ground, for, usually for groundwater, but sometimes. Uh, they'd actually do it for core samples for either regolith or uh, to work out what's underground with the geological formation. Parish boundaries, uh, they're, they're old things. That's uh, basically a goal. That I've, you don't have to worry about that because they pretty much don't exist any, anymore. Uh, parish names, you don't really need to know that. Just the suburb or the local name of the area. So those will probably, uh, they should be phased out. Uh, got quarries, pits, and contour lines, 20 meter intervals. And they're all in meters. So if you've got like 600 here, it means 600 meters above sea level. And the thing about these maps is that when you look at them on the computer, you need the, the graphics card needs to actually update it. Then you've got information about who made it. And this... Actual most important thing is here. And so we have the geological formations and they're all different colours. So over this side, we have the time period in this section. So this is a quaternary. Then we have tertiary. As far as I know, we've gotten rid of tertiary actually. So we have Holocene, which is the current period. Then Pleistocene. You've got Pliocene and Miocene, and as you can see, there's a break. So that's an unconformity, it means that there is no rock in between the Devonian, so there is no Cambrian, or no, not Cambrian, Carboniferous, uh, there's no Permian, there's no Mesozoic, so Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous, or the period of the dinosaurs. And there, <coughs> sorry, and there is no early periods of the tertiary period and then we have a major unconformity so unconformity means that the rock has been eroded and it's been new deposition then we have silurian probably not all time periods then we have the ordovician this looks quite extensive so we've got the bolindian estonian darwillian generally these these Different, like the old formations of Darwinian, Yapinian, Pelsomanian, are generally local subdivisions of the names. Uh, they probably wouldn't use those in Europe or North America, or even if in other geological formations uh, around Australia. So Bendigo is probably just a local name for Bendigo, Castlemaine for Castlemaine. And then we've got Cambrian. So we've got Cambrian. Ordovician, Silurian, and some Devonian, and so no Carboniferous or Permian rocks in this sequence. And you'll see is that there are, are no older rocks than the Cambrian, so obviously there is no Cratons. So Cratons generally made of the oldest rock. Oops. And then each Rock sequence, 
generally made of a different colour. So here we have the Cambrian, which looks like an, the symbol for Euro at the start. So at all these uh, time periods, the first letter is the actual time period. So we've got the what looks like an E for Cambrian. Then O for Ordovician, and if we go up, we have S for Silurian at the start. Now the second letter is the time period within that sequence. So if we go back down again, we've got L for, oh, not, see, I keep on thinking of late. So, but it's actually lower. So lower means the earliest part. Then we've got M for mid, so middle of the period. And U for upper means the, uh, the most recent of the time period. So Ordovician, L, 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 L. And then we've got upper. So we don't have any middle. M. Then we have the actual, so it's a solarium, the last letter, which is D, and that represents the actual formation. So the SLD, probably D, probably extension, Deep Creek. And then we have SIS, the S for Springfield, but we've also got subdivisions of the Springfield Sandstone. So it's got the Carlton Hill sandstone member, Stockdale conglomerate member. And conglomerate is just a, like, it is river rock that's been rounded, so pebbles, uh, and cemented into a rock uh, formation. And sandstone, and a Linton Creek conglomerate. So three different, four different types of rocks. And as you can see, uh, it actually, it's got a triangle, so it covers part of the actual sediment, not all of it. And we've got H, S-I-H, for Chitin Formation, and S-M-K for K for Kilmore. So that's basically how you read the actual three-letter uh, abbreviation of the name. Then you've got your name of the formation. Not all of them actually do have the name. So... OLM doesn't have a formal name. OLR is undifferentiated. And then you've got a description of the actual sequence. So the OLM is a sandstone, siltstone, shale, outcrop, poor and weathered. Outcrop's poor and weathered, so you don't actually see that much of the rock. Contains graptolites, which are an uh, organism, and phyllocarid crustacea. Then we've got the real sandstone, fin to thick bedded, so you can see the laminations on it. Uh, turbidic, so obviously it's been affected by waves. It's interbedded black shale and siltstone. So that means it's got black shale and siltstone as a part of the lamination. Uncommon well sorted channel sandstone. So um, channel deposits, fine conglomerate. The small pebbles contain sparse graptolite, so the fossils are not actually very common. And if we have a look, another one, and then we have the DGC, it's a Devonian. This is an intrusion. Devonian granite, and that's coarse grained with pertite feldspar fenacris. So it's got large crystals of feldspar in the, the actual granite. And then we're TVK. So you can see that the the uh, actual igneous rock. So the 
intrusive, which is the granite, and extrusive, which is the basalt. Yes, yeah. So, uh, the second letter. So, the first letter is the time period. The second letter is uh, volcanics, or a granite, G for granite. And the last letter is uh, the actual formation. So C for cobalt, pluton. Okay, for uh, usually it doesn't actually correspond because that letter is taken by something else. And sometimes they only have two letters. It gets quite complicated. And oops. Need to go to the Quaternary, Holoceny. So Holoceny, you see they just use Q for Quaternary. And they have used S. So S. And these really don't have any formal names. It's all alluvial. So, it's probably sedimentary river, and so that's, that's a bit more complicated. Well, maybe I'll do another video on it. Anyway, this get, video is getting longer. So, if we actually have a look at the actual outcrop, we can see that you've got different colours. So if we look at this pink, you can see SLD, so Silurian, Late Silurian. Then you've got in the middle QRC, which is Quaternary River Rock. And as you can see, it follows the actual river line. And on both sides, you actually have the red which is SIS, and we can check to see if that is actually the same, SIS, by going back and seeing what's red. So SIS is, here we go, and it's a Springfield sandstone, and the red one is the conglomerate. So as you can see, Oh, where, are, where are we again? Oh, up here. So it looks like this one is in a syncline or anticline. Let's actually look. See wherever it is. And you can see it has a line. See, it has a line with a, like a T intersection. On both sides. I need to actually do another video on this. But that means that you've got a large red line with two arrows going the side. So that is an anticline. It means the rock's folded. So on both sides it actually looks the same and it's been a bit weathered. So you can see the actual same feature here. So that means that it could be a hill. So we need to actually look at the topography and it looks like that 20, so we actually need to get a number. So it looks like that 65 meters, 55, 60, yeah, so it looks like that that is actually in the depression. And it's actually decreasing in, so it's probably in the valley. And then we have the orangey color here, which actually covers the actual Silurian rock. So S for Silurian. So that's actually Quaternary Volcanics. So the new volcanics. And then you've got some other. Silurian, late Silurian rock coming through, and then you've got some Ordovician. It gets a bit complicated, and as you can see, the 
high elevations over here are Ordovician. Talk about this part here, 500 meters. And the lower elevations are the basalt. But it doesn't always work out that way. Um, because differential erosion will actually uh, form different features. And then we have another part of the map here. So I actually need to look at more in detail. And here we have a cross section. So this is AA. So if you look on the map, you should see AA somewhere. So you look on the side. So there's A. Oh, wait, is that AA? And there's A. So where does AA go to? Okay, it goes right across the map. And there's B as well. So this is just pretty much cross sections to the map. And what it shows is the rock that's actually underground. So as you can see, as you go each meter underground, the actual rock changes. Because it's been faulted, folded, uh, compressed. And it actually changes the actual structure. So some places don't have any data because they probably haven't done any drilling. Because uh, drilling is expensive. And here we have another formation. We have a syncline and an anticline. You can see what I mean by a syncline and anticline. So yeah, those concepts are actually quite easy to actually learn. And here we have... So th this rock has been extremely faulted. A lot of it's missing and it's almost been overturned. So... That is basically how you actually learn how to read a geological map. Not too hard, but just a fun thing to do if you're actually interested in geology. Anyway, here's where I'll leave the video. And uh, I'd like to know what you actually like to know about the concepts of geology that you might be having trouble with. Thank you very much and have an awesome geological experience.